Good evening, waifus and husbandos, and welcome back. Good to evening. Another edition of Waifu Cast. Waifu, Waifu Cast. Cast. I am your host, Luna Kage. With me, as always, is your host, Orphis. And with us, as most of the time, is your host, Ryusuke. I mean, Isn't it all the yeah, time now? Pretty much all the time. Without him. Yeah, but, only, yeah I've know. only been gone twice. I mean, if most of the time is still technically true. Yeah. <laughs> I've only been gone twice. Once, actually. Once. Well, I wasn't here for the first one. Yeah, that, that's the one time. Yeah. But then when I was out of town, though, remember? No, you came back. You were in time time. for the podcast. Yeah. Did I? Yeah. Yeah, bro. Y'all sure? Yeah. You sure you're not the one that smokes weed? <laughs> no, bro. And the guy, like, I wasn't here for the first one. <laughs> and then you guys recorded one while I was in and California. We recorded Let's Plays without you, Holmes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I thought we were just from a podcast. No, dog. All right. Well, anyways. <laughs> I'm Ryusuke, dog. <laughs> What's up? What's good? Okay. Trip down memory lane. So, you know, <laughs> as of last week, we told you we were going to do a what we've been doing throughout the week. Every week. Mm-hmm. And Lord have mercy, I'm not ready to talk about Overwatch to you, but that's what I've been doing. Playing a lot of Overwatch, getting really upset with that game. Same as last week then, basically? Yeah, I, except that I didn't watch Avatar The Last Airbender this week, so I'm considerably less happy. <laughs> How about um, you? Um, played a lot more Splatoon. I got to a, I'm at a B- minus now, average, with my three uh, one B- minus, two C pluses. Um, cool. <laughs> I, uh, I'm just kidding. Watch some Ballroom Yosuka. Shit's on tonight. Um, and I also bought some manga. Which manga? I bought, uh, Kakegururi number one. I know what that is. And, uh, I bought Citrus number six. I also don't know what that is. Uh, can't wait to read that Citrus number six, nigga. That's that a year. Like a porn. It is a porn. Oh, but anyway, so um, <laughs> I've been fiending. I ain't read the Citrus in like six months. <laughs> Balls from blue as fuck. Yeah. But anyways, so Citrus number six, and um, what I miss? <laughs> okay. Can they get blue? Huh? Yeah, I'm light skin, nigga. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Probably closer to a shade of purple still, though. Anyway, <laughs> I guess I better... Can you get bruised? <coughs> yeah. yeah. I can't get sunburned, though. That's legit. I bet you just... I don't even want to talk about this. What'd you do this week, Luna? <laughs> I uh, still played Xenoverse. I um, made some more characters. And then made fusions of those characters. I watched The Defenders. Mm-hmm. I didn't mean to, like... <laughs> <laughs> Completely disregard what you were saying, but you didn't even really care about it in the context. I mean, of not this. much changed really. Like, I just did more of what the I Defenders did. Defenders wasn't very good. I'm gonna preach about it for a minute, actually, because like, in regards to like Marvel, as far as like their cinematic efforts, mm-hmm. their Netflix side universe is for for a time was my favorite part of it because it's just grittier and. Yeah, more, I've, more more willing to I've only be watched violent. Jessica Jones and Luke Cage. See, like, Daredevil season one and two are, in my opinion, the best that they did. Jessica Jones is, like, a close second because Jessica Jones is really good. Yeah. But Luke Cage, like... Luke Cage is too... I felt like too, too much of a political stance, and I didn't like that. It was a little bit, yeah. But... Because even me, I hate politics and shit, but I still, like, enjoy Luke Cage. It's like, I don't agree with the political stance it took, but at the same time, like, the hero that they were using, a black man who's bulletproof, in a time when black people were being killed by the cops, air quote, I understood why they did what they did. Yeah. It was kind of, like, perfect for that. But... I don't know. It was too much of a political I statement. Know, when, when that nigga went in that fucking uh, dope house, though, when uh, Bring the Ruckus started playing, I got hype as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. It was okay. And it was I, appealing to the inner city. Iron oh, Fist. Shit, I, I was hype as fuck. Iron Fist got, like, shat on by reviewers. Like, people hated it. I didn't think it was that bad. What was was it just because he was white, people shat on it? He's white in the comics. I know. Was, people don't care. <laughs> they shat on it because, like, the the dude who played Danny Rand and the way they characterized Danny Rand, he was just such a little bitch. Yeah. And he's just not a good character. And they fucking 
not only was his own solo series not good, but then the defenders kind of like hinged on him, and he's easily the weakest link. I don't know, man. Like they, they built the defenders up from the moment they announced Daredevil as the first series that they were going to be going towards the defenders. They're going to do these four series, and they were going to culminate in the defenders. And it was just flat the fuck out not worth that build up. Yeah. It 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 was not even spectacular really, like nothing. I don't know. I don't even know, man. It's hard for me. I was really let let down by it. The only thing that was worthwhile about it was that I got to see did more of Daredevil outside of his own show because it had been a minute. Yeah, I I, I guess the reason why I didn't care too much is because uh, I didn't care too much about any of those ever. Like I didn't. I never liked Daredevil. Never cared for Luke Cage. Iron Fist was always whatever. I like Daredevil. Like, I don't know. Like I, I just. I like Daredevil's connection to ninjas and shit. Like I always thought that that was cool. I mean, I'm I'm not like saying he's the coolest hero ever. I just I did have an interest in him, and I felt like the show represented him well. And then um, I'm very excited about the Punisher series that's about to come out off of it. Because, Punisher's cool, yeah. Well, and his he he was part of the second season of Daredevil. That's like where he, he it's a spinoff from that that he's getting his own series, and he was just it. It was the best film version of The Punisher. Mm-hmm. It was very much exactly what I wanted, and I'm certain, based on how they handled it in Daredevil, that The Punisher standalone series will be good on its own. So, Yeah, I'll probably give Defenders a watch. Like, Definitely like a lot of the characters they pulled out, I didn't know anything about, or like really have any affinity for. It really just... Sp- like it just kind of jumped off of I like Kristen Ritter so I watched Jessica Jones I'm, and I'm, I, sounds like I'm shitting on it yeah I understand that it's not awful mm-hmm. it's only eight episodes and it's a quick watch so it's like I mean it's worth the watch like all I'm saying episodes uh, f- closer to fifty minute episodes okay. but I'm just like like I said they built that up over Daredevil Season 1, Jessica Jones Season 1, Daredevil Season 2, Luke Cage Season 1, and then Iron Fist Season 1. So five seasons of television they dedicated to building that miniseries up, Mm -hmm. and it just didn't feel like the... It felt like it, first of all, had a smaller budget than any, like, even Daredevil did. That's my, yeah, I'm serious, man. Oh, shit. It doesn't, it was like, first of all, it takes until the end of spoilers, the end of the third episode before the, uh, like, the Defenders are even all together and doing anything. Oh, shit, okay. So three of eight. That's, that's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah, that is pretty ridiculous. And they don't even fight together, really, again, uh, for another episode and a half. So you're in episode five now, and the action's starting to ramp up, and it's just like Daredevil had action consistently throughout. Yeah. Jessica Jones wasn't about that. Yeah, it wasn't. Plus, I, they, they were super inconsistent with Jessica Jones' powers, and that always bothered me about that. The prob- I think a part of it was they wanted to be vague. It's just like she could lift up a car with one hand, and then she's getting fucking manhandled by like some re- some nigga on steroids, and it's like I can't believe this right now. <laughs> yeah, it was definitely like it, it it's took like me pick out of one, it. like either she's Jesus or she's like slightly above average. Pick one. Yeah. <laughs> well, that about, I think that is that about good for our yeah, week. Yeah, I don't think I did anything else. So yeah. All right, yeah, so I downloaded Sonic Mania. That's really it. Yeah, same. But <laughs> You'll see that from us, so yeah. stay tuned. All right, so our topic for this week is going to be uh, something we thought would be, I guess, kind of fun. We all decided that we were going to do, like, three of our gaming wishes. Yeah. So, like, unrealistic or, you know... Things that will never happen but that we really want. But within the realm of realism. Yeah. yeah. Who wants to start? I kind of uh, got one. Go for it. Right off the bat, and it was one that I just thought of. Um, as far as, like, revivals go, you know, um, we just got Sonic Mania, which was, like, a, a nostalgia trip with some new shit mixed in, basically, but what, what, what that essentially was, was them giving the Sonic IP to these fans fans that understand what made Sonic good to begin with, so what I'm kind of wanting is for them to do the same thing, except for the not I guess you could call them classic at this point but 
the more modern Sonic games. Give those to those same people and see what they do with it. Like, for example, have them try to take a swing at, like, an adventure-type game, Sonic Adventure? I would like yeah. to see that myself. I, it's always baffled me with Sonic Team that they, they like... I guess it, it, it people like uh, even Ryusuke, and I, as much as I disagree with it, I do think it's a valid point that they say that if you go back to Sonic Adventure 1 and 2 and you try to look at it through without nostalgia goggles on, that they don't hold up as good games. And truthfully, that I mean, mechanically they are really rough and whatnot, but they were fun, and I think that if they were fine-tuned a little mm -hmm. bit and that same basic formula was just refined and yeah. made prettier... It would be a good game. Like um, imagine yeah. that too. Like, and I don't know. Why, I don't know why they haven't just done that. They like, they've nailed that aspects of it in other games, but um, like imagine how that like what they could do with it. Because like when you look at Sonic Mania, they basically made it what a sequel to Sonic Three and Knuckles would be like. Like straight from the from the save screen. Right? Oh yeah, for sure. It, it was an exact like return to form. Well, and it's great because. It kind of, in a way, do, heals a little bit of the damage that Sonic 4 yeah. kind of did because that game didn't deserve no. the Not Sonic 4 title. Yeah. yeah, wasn't it like episodic or some dumb shit? It was, like it was in two episodes. It was supposed to be three, but two failed so hard that they never got around to I three. Played, yeah, well, because like, it wasn't I can't play the good. demo for episode one. I played episode one, and I'll tell you what, I didn't hate it as much as everyone else did, mm -hmm. but it certainly was not good. Well, here's the thing is, it's like Sonic Mania. It, it, they made every effort to make the game look and feel exactly yeah. the same as the old ones. This and was also, them trying to try to emulate that with 3D graphics and all this stuff. And it's just, it, they didn't have, the, it, it didn't feel right. Uh -huh. It didn't look that good. It yeah. didn't feel that, everything the really The physics were feel. completely off. Yeah. Meanwhile, Sonic Mania, the second you're playing that first level, it feels, it feels it, right. You, it feels like the Sonic you played when it you were It feels kid. better than, and, and the Generations... Classic Sonic stages still felt good, yeah. but it feels better than that. Okay. It feels more correct. Yeah, I played than that did. a little bit of Generations and I enjoyed it. Yeah, I didn't play much of it, but what so I what I would love to see from a Sonic Mania adventure is what I what I will call it affectionately right now is kind of an like that same idea but applied to some of the more popular modern Sonic formulas. Like, uh, you know, they, they had multiple selectable characters in Sonic Mania, but they didn't differentiate a whole lot. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like you they played were, the same game, just right. with a different character. Yeah. I would kind of love to see that, except instead of, like, how Adventure 2 did it, where, like, they have their own completely separate things, like a shooting person and a person that collects emeralds. Instead of necessarily seeing that, maybe have, uh, like, take a few of the popular, more modern Sonic characters, like obviously Sonic, maybe Shadow, and um, even even Blaze, because she's probably one of the more popular, more recent characters, new characters, um, and have them play... Who's Blaze? Blaze the Cat? She comes from uh, Sonic Rush, I yeah. believe. Sonic Rush. Didn't you like Sonic Rush? It was a D the DS Sonic game. I didn't play that. Sonic 06. She was in Sonic 06. Yeah, but she was only DS Sonic, Sonic I played. First. The only DS Sonic I played was Colors. Okay, yeah. All right. Okay. But but yeah, she was actually really cool. She's fast as fuck like Sonic, and okay. she she's also the only female character in the games ever to have a super form as well. Okay. Burning Blaze, so she's like my Khalifa in Sonic form. Yeah, I always wanted a side scrolling Sonic with yeah. Shadow in it. So he, really... here's what I kind of what I would like to see from it, right? Yeah. Uh it could make each one of those characters use a different plane. Like, uh, I don't know what the third one could necessarily be, like, but maybe one one could still be side-scrolling, but like 2.5D-style side-scrolling. One could be the typical Sonic Adventure-type play style, and one could be more similar to Sonic uh, Generations, Sonic Unleashed Day Stage, Sonic Colors-type play style, to where like you'll have those three popular presentations of modern Sonic without having the, like, oh, Eggman likes to shoot stuff, you get to play as him. And, like, oh, you're Knuckles, but you gotta dig for emeralds. You know, instead of that, they could just take the, like, fucking 25 levels of fucking, of, like, the good shit that we've seen in the last decade or so, right? Yeah. So everything that was salvageable from Modern Sonic, 
throw it all into one game, add some nostalgia and some references like they did in Sonic Mania, and I think that could be fucking amazing if uh, if that team was given the rights to something like that. I mean, I don't disagree, but personally, like, I don't need all those extra characters. Yeah. I mean, I still like think three is a pretty good number, though. Because, like, that's essentially how many you had in Sonic Mania, so... That's... I, I'm just, like, I would be fine with a game where I only played as Sonic. I mean, I'm yeah. not saying, like, eliminate those characters if, like, to interact with them and right, stuff. Right, Oh, an- another thing, too, like, I'm, I'm, I'm like, kind of going off the rails with my original idea, but we could just have it be just as simple as it was in Sonic Mania with the additional characters. Because in Sonic Mania, they all played through the same fucking set. And that's shit. what I'm saying. I prefer but, it be that. Right. But they, they also had their own sets of abilities that made them able to go through differently. So, like, realistically, especially if you take those three characters, Sonic, Shadow, and Blaze, they all, they're all fast... They're, they all basically have Sonic's move set, so mm-hmm. you can realistically think of them as like a new skin that you slap on Sonic, would, and you're playing through the same game with those characters. I would definitely like that more because, like, I mean, you guys can disagree, but for me at least, when I played a Sonic game and I could be Knuckles or Air Tails, and it felt like it was like a crutch to me more so than anything because. Well, that's exactly what I'm saying. I yeah. don't want to feel like I'm playing a completely yeah. different game. Yeah. To play these characters, and it's like. And I agree with that too. It's like you know, Well, and that's what I'm saying. Like I feel like if, like you said, it's like just kind of like a, a skin swap almost. Yeah. With a couple of different You can have way abilities. more dedication just to the level design and to that type of thing. Because they're, you know, all the characters are going to go through those levels mm-hmm. by and large the same way. And also with that too, you could even add more characters without having to drastically change the game. Because like you could, if that just operated like that, you could have tails and knuckles in there as well. Except they would just be slightly different than the other ones. Like for example, in Sonic Mania, as well as Sonic Three and Knuckles, Knuckles played almost exactly the same, except he couldn't jump as high. Mm-hmm. But he could glide, you know. He could attach you know, the walls me, and like, stuff. When I would play, like, because I mostly have like uh, experience with the advanced games, uh-huh. and so like when I would play some of those, and I would be tails or knuckles, or whatever. It, to me, it was like you'd be playing as them, and here'd be some intricate like platforming thing that was obviously made for Sonic. Uh-huh. And then I could just, if I was Tails or Knuckles, I could just give it the middle finger and right. like fly up or climb up it. And that, that, that was pretty true for the other games, too. The difference is, is that with Knuckles, um, it was a lot less prevalent in the Sonic 3 game. Yeah. Sonic 3 and Knuckles as well. Because unless you had a platforming section that started off higher and then got lower, that Sonic had to go across. Because honestly, you could do that with Sonic as well. Like, if you were like, oh, this platform's up here... And then there's this platforming section, and then where I gotta go is down there. I'm just gonna spin dash and jump. Mm. You know, I bypass everything. Yeah. But they didn't do that very often. So, okay. like with Knuckles, platforming sections often were a little more difficult, but due to his ability to glide and cling to walls, it was easier to save yourself from mm-hmm. dying if you made a, a wrong move. Yeah. So, whereas he was kind of like a hard mode, he still had that safety net in the form of his special ability. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, Tails was kind of like a combination of both because he could fly, but he also jumped just as high as Sonic. So it's like he he was completely good at this platforming shit. Yeah. So like really, Tails was kind of like an easy mode with the exception of the fact that uh, he couldn't go super unless you got all 14 emeralds. But that really isn't much of a... Actually, he was super easy mode if you got all 14 emeralds. Fucking, do you remember that? Yes. When he went super, he got flickies that would just attack the enemies for him. Oh, really? He would just stand there, fucking M. Bison and shit, and like his birds would just fucking attack anything really? on screen. Like yeah, some Gundam like, shit? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> super Tails was busted. Oh, that's funny. Alright, so do you want to go next? Yeah. So, first on my list is uh, if I could wish for anything to actually happen in gaming, it would be Dark Cloud 3. That's uh, that's probably the sequel I want more than any other sequel in like video games. Cause I only played uh, I have Dark Cloud one like in my backlog. I'll play it one day before I die. But Dark Cloud two is legitimately one of my favorite games of all time. For sure. And it's one that of the first games. That game's been around games. for a while too, right? Yeah, and it's 
great in a sense where you could go and play that right now on PS4, and it pl- it's mechanically holds up. Like yeah. it doesn't feel super clunky or anything like that, and the mechanics and the way you progress through the game are still really fun. Yeah. And so, like, in Dark 2 specifically, um, it's actually called Dark Chronicle in Japan, but mm-hmm. they call it Dark Cloud 2 here. Um, you were, uh, you played as two characters. There was a boy named Max and a girl named Monica. And you would switch between them, and Monica was, like, from the future, and then Max was what the game would consider the present. Uh-huh. And um, you would progress through the game, and... It kind of like it implemented like kind of base building or town building, and which is something I hate, but it implemented in a way that really paid off. So like when you would restore something, like if you would make something in the past, it would restore something in the future. So you yeah. get like a new shop or something like that for meeting a certain requirement in the past. So like I like to see a sequel where they, I don't want to say they stick to like the entire formula. But I like to see most of the mechanics of two come back, especially like the town building, because yeah. I felt like it was really rewarding when you like build something and then you go to the future and it's just like, oh shit, I did all this. <laughs> it's just worth from noting, what's up? Um, that this is level five that developed this game, mm-hmm. and they they made Dragon Quest Eight, they made Nino Kuni, yep. they made. Um, so they got a really good track record. Yeah, Rogue yeah, Galaxy. Yeah. Well, and this is where they got their start. Oh, they made Rogue Galaxy too. Yeah. yeah, I actually have that game on PS4. Me too. It's a great game. I, I have yet to play it though, but I remember seeing it. I'm like, I should play that game. I, I literally bought it the second week I had my PS4, like a year and a half, two years ago. You should sit down and play. <laughs> that's actually something maybe me and you should do. That's a that's a game that would lend itself well to Let's Plays because it's not a grinding heavy game. Oh yeah. It's a kind of just go through the story type deal but yeah it's a fucking awesome game and it's really underrated and it didn't sell that well but they are yeah. uh, they did the professor layton games uh, i know them you know that's not everybody's cup of tea but they did them they did yeah. um i mean those actually did really well though <coughs> well, so nino good. cooney though is uh, also yeah. fucking wonderful i'm, I'm, not, a huge, I'm like, not a huge fan of nino cooney but it's mainly because of just its presentation style yeah not even necessarily because i'd of say it. nino cooney is probably the game with the biggest impact as, like as of recent they've made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah for it, sure. it, it definitely did. Blow but yeah, up I would time. like to see them revisit Dark Cloud like with that same engine that they used for Nino Kuni one and now two. So that the combat could be more fluid. Um I agree, I'd love to see that. Yeah, yeah. if the com yeah, have the combat be more fluid, have actual levels instead of just uh dungeon crawling. Yeah. See, I um, I've never played Dark Cloud too. I own it on PS4. Oh, dude, but you should, you should play see, it. I never played. You should it just either. fuck around with it. I, like, it's I, so I, good. I know it's good because a lot of people like. Pr- I've never heard anybody say bad things about that game. Mm-hmm. Um, but that was also around like that was out in the time where my ability to experiment with games was not very high. You had an and, Xbox. Well, yeah, but even when I got a PS2, which I did, mm. uh, you know, basically my PS2 were, was limited to. Final Fantasy X, fucking Persona 4, when it came out in 2009, you know, and of course games like Onimusha and shit, like I didn't really, I stuck with games that I knew I would like, Yeah. because I had either played them before, or um, they were sequels, so it's like a shit that I had to get, mm-hmm. uh, but like I, I didn't really experiment too much, like with, the only reason I ended up experimenting with Persona was because uh, Derek was actually going to trade his in, and I was like, I looked uh... at it... Yeah. Dude, I was young and dumb. <laughs> this was like, what? This was literally <laughs> when, 2009, When did you first right? play Persona? What year? Um, 2008. And you started with Fess or 4? Four? 4. All right, so eat my dick. I bought the original Persona 3 the day it came out. <laughs> okay, nigga. All right. Okay. But- <laughs> I'm just saying. I was hit before you. You were, I mean, you were like the same age as me, though. <laughs> I was finding out about cooler things before you. <laughs> you were, I don't know, fapping to hentai. I don't know. I still Nigga, do you were stealing magnesium from chemistry and shit. Damn, what? <laughs> what? I wanted to light it on fire at home because it burns bright. There's a burn in my counter upstairs from when I did it. I did you? Not. <laughs> I remember. Day. From that, yeah, man. I was like, my mom, check this out. Lit it on fire. I got partnered on the with. Counter. I didn't think it burned the counter. <laughs> I think that was like the first time me and Derek ever formally met. I got partnered with him and like this dude named Scott. Was it Scott? Yeah. Oh yeah. Scott. Yeah. Scott Kalani. Really? And, um, <laughs> I was in a band with him. 
Shout we get out. done the experiment bell rings and Derek's like, keeping this one. Like, man, these are these are bad kids. <laughs> <laughs> me and Derek. Bad influence. Me and Derek never talked together. <laughs> <laughs> never ever. <laughs> I stopped going to chemistry. <laughs> I dropped out of chemistry. Shit, what was I saying? I, second semester of chem no, actually, no, we're not gonna talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> um But uh, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The the fucking Derek's Persona 4 story. Fucking the only reason because that was one of the most experimental things I had done on PS2. The only reason was because, like, I, I just so happened to be hanging out with him on a day he was going to trade it in. What was this, 2010? Something like that. Um, one of the rare occurrences of us hanging out back then. And he was like, yeah, I'm going to trade this game in because i got to get fucking, I don't know, Call of Duty or something. Like it was, <laughs> so oh, it was shit. back during those days when you were like, i got to get God, the damn. newest AAA title. And I was like, that's cool, Derek. And then you'd be like, Final Fantasy sucks. I'm like, that's cool, Derek. Ooh. But then, uh, it was some Rocky Fantasy, times back in the day. Yeah, that, was, and shit. that was like Final Fantasy 13 times. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. It, it was before that. Oh, it was really? definitely before Ooh. that, yeah. Well, because I don't know, Final Fantasy kind of fell off. My, no, it did. You? No, you're right. But it you, did, it I, did. I think it was... I was a hipster, yeah, you're right. I, I forget what we were talking about, but I do I do remember getting into arguments about that kind of stuff specifically around this time. Oh, well, yeah, because I was definitely <laughs> vehemently against how yeah. Final Fantasy Seven was not that great. Oh, yeah, yeah. But uh, but anyway, well, I was for how it was not that great. Yeah. So he okay. he was he was gonna go trade in Persona Four, and I had never really heard of it. I had seen it because he had it in the case and everything. Uh, it was, it even had the book, didn't it? It had the booklet. Yeah, man. Yeah, it was the whole fucking package. The whole shebang. Did you and see uh, it? OST? I don't think so. I, th I think it was just a standard edition. No, that right. was a standard edition. Yeah, yeah. They all came with the OST. Well, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so I was looking at it on the ride to GameStop. I'm just looking at it. I'm like, man, this looks like it's an RPG. This looks like a game I'd probably play. Like, look at fucking look at the bitch with the legs. And I was yeah. like, I was like, Derek, you shouldn't trade this in. Because, <laughs> like, when I'm looking at this game, you got to think, back in 2009, 2010, right? Looking at an obviously anime game, mm -hmm. how often do we get those? Like I'm looking at this game like it's Thousand Arms, right? Well, see, a game I'm never gonna see again if I let it pass. We got more of them than you knew. It was just <laughs> right. that no, yeah, I was sure. always like, well, like, well, I think I worked at GameStop or like I just had, yeah. I always knew when shit was coming out, right. so it was like that stuff wasn't. Um, it was. I, that, that was just another game at the time. Yeah, I mean, shit. But when I looked at it, I'm like, if I let this slip through my fingers, I might never get to play it. And it looks like something I might want to play, you know? So I'm like, Derek, I want this. He was like, 10 bucks. Okay? And at that time, I happened to have 10 bucks. <laughs> Probably because I was actually working at this point. That's a deal. But I was like, yeah, here's your 10 bucks. And then I think he traded in other stuff that day. But I went home. I, I didn't even have a PS2 at that time. It was, uh, I had to. Or maybe I was letting it. someone borrow it. One of one of the I th no, I actually bought a PS2 to refurbished right after that. Yeah. Oh shit! Because like I'm like, oh, I got all these PS2 so games, he's but whole with him now. <laughs> 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 no, because like because uh, like I had lost my PS2. Uh, I forgot how, but I had lost it or mine broke or whatever, and I had had this collection of PS2 games, and then I have this new PS2 game, and I'm like, I can get one for like fifty bucks, like refurbished at GameStop. Might as fucking well. And then I did, and then I played it, and my whole life changed forever. The rest is history. The rest is history. All right, so my wish, <laughs> my first wish, I want Mother 3 to be translated. Ooh. Oh, shit. Okay. Officially. That's a pretty good starting point. I thought you were going to go with World Ends with you. No. World Ends with 2. I, I've played the fan translation yeah. extensively and through multiple times, and I... Was it not, like, good enough for you? No, I mean, it was fine. It's just that in order to play it in kind of, like, the plat in a, like, official way, because I what I ended up doing was I bought a, like, somebody manufactured a Game Boy Advance cartridge with yeah. the fan translation on it. So I have a cart that I oh, can put shit, into okay. a GBA and play it on a GBA. That's what I wanted to do was play it, you know, on, like, the native experience. Right. The, mo the most advanced version of it I could, so I have a DS that I play it on. Yeah. And so, you know, like, I got that experience, and the game is fucking awesome, and I just don't understand why Nintendo hasn't done it. It is really weird. Yeah, I don't... And it's don't, like... You do dumb shit like With that. as popular as those games 
realistically are, the fact that they don't come over here is ridiculous. Well, I mean, here's the thing is it's like... Because, like, I, I didn't even know this until, like, last year, I think. But the Earthbound we got was Mother 2. Yeah, and that's what I... <laughs> but they released... See, Mother 1 was made and fully translated, but just got canceled and didn't yeah. get brought here. They fully translated and it had, a, like, a prototype of the finished product. That finished product ended up getting into the hands of somebody who ripped the ROM from it, and that found its way online. So people had played uh-huh. it for a long time. Nintendo officially released that when the Wii U was... They were trying to to push it through to success. They released it as Earthbound Beginnings or something like that. Like Earthbound Zero? And they released Earthbound on the 3DS and on the Wii U as well as a virtual console game. And it's like... So Mother 3 is the only one we haven't gotten. Yeah, and it's like... I just feel like it would be so easy for them. The 3DS was the place to do it. Yeah. But Now the Switch could be the place And that's where I'm at. I feel like... Just please do it. Like, I don't understand. Like, even if you just took the fan translation and used that, just release it. Yeah. I don't understand why you wouldn't even do that. They offered to give it to you for free. Yeah. It works. I've played the game start just... to finish. I know that it works. Like, it can't be about the power of the systems. Yeah. And that's like, it's just, there's no reasonable explanation. You niggas got back then, Nintendo. Like, I heard y'all like Chibi Robo, though. <laughs> I mean, for those who don't know, like, Earthbound Mother, the games are just, like, really traditional RPGs with, like, a modern world setting. Yeah, and they had a lot of really good, like, social commentary. And the humor, the writing. They're just no. very, very well made games. And in today's. Beautiful sprite art. In today's climate where Undertale is the shit. You know, and I, I don't even like totally Undertale. Totally an homage to the Mother yeah, series. Yeah, so like it, it's it's like the perfect time to release something like that too, because you got essentially a built-in fan. Base. I'm saying to you, you, I guarantee you, I can say this with 100 percent confidence that there are people, enough people, interested in that that translation, no matter where you decide to release it, mm. that would pay for it to justify doing it. Yeah. Day one, people would be dropping money on that. Yep. hundred percent guaranteed. They just released all three games on cartridge. Yeah, yes. fuck it. Like the, the fucking. I, un, that like, would have uh, been like the best thing. I don't even know. give a shit about the prequel. And to be honest with you, at this point, like I played through Earthbound and whatnot, but like Mother Three is a much su- superior game. I would yeah, just but, but I, having having that accessibility to the whole series in one go. Yeah, would be great, especially for someone I'd like pay me. Sixty bucks for it. Yeah, and that's the shit. thit. Really? Yeah. Shit? Well, dude, yeah, I think about the amount of content, like, time to dollar wise. Like, if you decided to sit through and play through all three of those games, it's going to be. Oh, well for all three. I'm not talking about just Mother 3. And like, no, yeah. I'm saying I paid 60 bucks for all three. Okay. okay. And you yeah, could even, like, like they could even, like, um, if they did it that way, like, uh, not necessarily scaled it up, but even made it, you know, widescreen without really an update to graphics or anything, just to, just to kind of release it. Uh, you could feasibly have a physical version for sixty bucks, all three games, and you could also sell them individually on the uh, the digital on the digital store for yeah. twenty bucks each. Yep. You know what I mean? Like it, it would be a marketing such a great idea. Yeah, absolutely. And it's like uh, Square did it with the uh, the sort of uh, the, the Mana games, uh, Secret of Mana, mm-hmm. um, Sword of Mana, or actually the Final Fantasy Adventure. Yeah. Secret of Mana and Seiken Densetsu 3. They did that in, on the Switch in Japan. They never brought it over here, but they did. Uh, they released it there. And I, I don't know, I think it might be $40. But same idea. It's exactly the same games. There's no widescreen or nothing. Like even Final Fantasy Adventure takes up like the small-ass portion of the screen and shit. But I would pay full price for that shit because yeah. those games are awesome. Yeah. And the same goes for the mother games. And I, Just at the end of the day, I don't understand why Nintendo hasn't like... It's it. They're learning their lesson with Metroid. We're getting uh, two Metroid games on the way. One side-scrolling one that people have been clamoring for. Basically, they're giving every prime. Metroid fry, every Metroid fan what they want. Yeah. Hey, and it's like they need to do the same thing for the mother people. It's like we, why not? It's like I know that it's not your most popular franchise, but I guarantee you there are enough fans. Like. Fan Gamer is a uh, website store and whatnot that started as basic. That started off of what's called Starmen.net. Oh, jeez. Which is just a yeah. fan site for Mother. Yeah. And it's a it's like they sell 
like they have a bunch of like affiliated games that they sell like official merchandise for. Like the boxed edition of Undertale on the PS4 and Vita is through them. Mm-hmm. They pub they made it and shit. So it's like they released uh, the uh, an official guide. I actually have it for Mother Three, and they just released one uh, not that long ago for Earthbound. Okay. Like fan made shit that's like of amazing quality for these games. Yeah, I tell me there's me. not a market for that. Right. Like, the Mother fans are probably some of the most dedicated fucking fans out there. Yeah, really. for three games. Yeah. And you won't even give them a uh, anything. Yeah. yeah. It's <laughs> so we're not even asking for like, a sequel here. We're just asking not, for a release. Yeah. Just release that shit. You already made the game. Yeah. Game's already made. Fucking there are people that are willing to give you their translated version of the game. They, just they want did you to all the work it. for yeah. you for free. Yeah. All right, so yeah, that's mine. Mother 3 localized on the Switch. Okay. All right. My next one. See, I kind of got two ideas floating around in my head. Uh, they kind of intersect with each other a little bit, but I'll just go with one that's, uh, that's a little more obvious. I want a turn-based Final Fantasy again. Like a true one? Yeah. Who are you telling, dog? <laughs> yeah, I mean... that, and, and it can even be in the same vein of 13 words dynamic turn-based... I want to do this in the interest of time yeah. because this actually aligns with my second one almost perfectly. Yeah. My second one is I want the uh, the team that made the original Star Ocean, and it's important to note that that team split after Star Ocean, and actually the the people that split off founded uh, Wolf. T- I think Wolf Team is their name, and they made Tales of Fantasia. Okay. So the Tales series exists because of that yeah. team splitting up. I want. I would love to see them reunite That's for a a two D. Tales like Star Ocean like yeah. game with HD sprite work and stuff like yeah. that. So basically, we want some fucking old school JRPGs could, to come back. Yeah, if I could get a, a old school Star Ocean, that'd be dope. Yeah, it's like Persona was satisfied. Persona yeah. Five, and honestly, it's like the closest return to form we've gotten. Yeah, but, but at the same time, it's still very not much not what I'm talking about. You well, know Bravely I mean? Default was what I was talking about, but. Yeah. It was on my DS, or my 3DS, and I want it to be HD. I want it to be yeah. beautiful, but I want it... Like, Nino Kuni. Actually, yeah. Nino Kuni is a picture-perfect example, because aside from the battle system, everything else about that game is exactly what I wanted. Right. It had a proper overworld that was HD and everything like that. It was just the battle yeah. system that I didn't And, like, I don't even for. care if Sasuke's the main character, you know? Like, it's, fi- like it's yeah. Final Fantasy, it's bound to happen. It could be the tropiest shit ever. Right. I really don't care I about that. I just want, I, like, just, it's, again, I'm I bringing up grind. Sonic Mania. I want to have <laughs> bosses that are stupid strong that require me to think of, like, ways to break the game. Yeah. Like, I, I, I fucking, I, I keep... I want to be able to break the game. I keep going back to Sonic Mania again today, but, like, the feeling I got when I played that game, it just reminds me of being the gamer I used to be, except in 2017, you know? Yeah. There was nothing groundbreaking about it. I've been rather depressed about this lately because it's like, all these new games keep coming out and I keep buying them for the Switch and shit and it's like, they I, I know that I like them and whatnot, but it's just like, there's this almost this new school of thought in game design and yeah. I, it just doesn't agree with my sensibilities doesn't really like appeal to me like old school games do and I find yeah. myself having a hard time motivating myself to play a lot of these games because yeah. it's just like, doesn't have the same kind of magical feeling about it. I don't yeah. lose myself so and easily like, in and the I game thought, anymore. And like it, it kind of branching off of what we both said. Like uh, I thought that it was just me getting older I wouldn't have that feeling again. But and even, even, like, even like when I enjoyed Pokemon or uh, Persona 5 I love the shit out of those games, but it didn't remind me of, you know, how I used to play games. It was just how I play games now, and it was a new way. But when I'm playing Sonic Mania, I feel this fucking hole in my chest. I know and I totally agree with what you're saying, but for me with Persona 5, I part of the problem that I have is that I can't get involved with a game. I can't... You know what I'm saying when I mean what I mean when I'm saying involved like I can't like put myself in the situation feel invested in what's happening yeah and cause like you've got games like The Last of Us and Uncharted where their narrative is just like 
set piece driven and whatnot. And yeah. that, it, it, that, it, I liked Uncharted two when it came out. I thought that game was great. But by the time Uncharted three had come out, even though I enjoyed that game to a degree, I could recognize that it. I had seen it before. It's all been done. It, it's it's boring. It's essentially just the same kinds of things over and over again. And then yeah. I feel like that's happened to a lot of aspects of gaming. And Persona Five kind of broke me out of that. It, it allowed. I got involved in every detail. I cared about the social interactions. Nope. I cared about the story at <laughs> itself. I cared about the grind. I cared about everything that I did in that game. Yeah, that, everything that, that you did had a consequence. That, had that, that was that was the most. I've ever been excited to play a game to advance the story and probably ever since I was a kid. You That's know? what I'm saying. The story was finishing the story not because I was tired of playing the game, yeah. but because I wanted to see the story conclude was one of the driving forces of me getting so involved in the game. And that, that, like, that drive, that feeling has yeah. been missing for me. And he, like, here's a great example um, of of what I'm kind of like when it comes to shit like that. Before, especially, when there was a game I liked and I would get to where I knew this was the final area, I would almost <laughs> grow out of the game instantaneously because I didn't want to see the game end because I enjoyed it. Yeah, like the disappointment of it being over. Yeah. Meanwhile, Persona 5, it's like it was a game that I loved, but I was like excited to get done with it because I wanted to you know I wanted to see what happens I wanted to get through with it I haven't done it yet but it is a game I know that I'm going to play again and that was another huge thing for me it was the first time I played a game that long from start to finish and knew that I was going to go through it a second time yeah like and I, I, I believe that too actually like I'll, I'll still see it on my uh, PS4 dashboard you know and like every time I pass over it I'm like you. Oh, you. <laughs> I, st I get that same feeling that, could today be the day? I'm like, no, not today. Not yet. Not today. <laughs> One day. Not today. So how about you, Reeves? Okay, what's your second wish? Um, to be quite honest, um, I kind of wanted to elaborate a little bit more on uh, his wish. Kind of, We didn't, like, get into the meat of it. What exactly would you guys want to see from a, a, like, oh, a, a yeah, AAA yeah. turn-based Final Fantasy? Well, right, right, yeah. okay, so... Number one thing to me... He's a fan of the podcast right now. <laughs> ...as a player is I need... I, the world itself that it's set in mm -hmm. has to be realized. One of the things about Final Fantasy X that turned me off from it the, the most was the way that you kind of just jumped from location to location with the story. Yeah. I, do, I don't like that. I don't like that sense of being dragged around. I want to exist in the world. Right, yeah. I, and it's like, like funny, I funny enough, like when you think about Final Fantasy VII, you've seen every area of the game by the time you're done with the first disc. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And it's not even like that game's not linear. Right. But the fact is that I can go off and grind for 25 hours and not advance shit with the plot and get myself wrapped up in whatever the fuck I want to do. Yeah. And that freedom is something I think is sorely lacking. Like, it's not like you can't grind right. in a game like Final Fantasy X, but I don't know. I guess that one of the things that I think has been missing a lot is, like, the incentive to make personal goals. Mm -hmm. I like to goal set when I play games. I like to, to be, like, I like when I have an objective in the game, but I also like when I have a reason to make my own objectives and, like... I understand that maybe I'm making it sound like I want Final Fantasy to be like Fallout or something like that, but that's not it at all. No. Yeah. I don't want it to be jam-packed with nonsensical content. What I mean is like, get to a town where there's a sword that costs an absurd amount of money mm -hmm. early on in the game, and, and your only option that. is to fight the weakest enemies for the littlest amount of money over and over and over again, but you can do it yeah. and get the money for that sword because I will get the money for that sword. It, it reminds me of... If uh, two people can wield that sword, I'll get the money for that sword <laughs> twice. Right. When, when I, whenever I play through 7, uh, it, it all happens at around the same time, too. Like, as soon as you get Yuffie, it's also my favorite area to grind. So I always get all the limit breaks up to level 3, and then I go get Beta. Beta is 
the fucking is that sword you're talking about because it's like the attack hits so hard and even if you technically survive the fight because before you use it it usually whips one of your characters out so that if you die it's not a game over you just that character is the only one alive and you go back to the world map Mm -hmm. but even if that happens you don't get that skill unless you kill that snake after eating beta and that is rough so it's like my whole playthrough up to that point is getting ready to get beta because that's like my favorite goal to set like fucking I, I get elemental as soon as I can and you can get it fucking in the Shinra building and that's really early this is a, this concept exactly what he's describing is what I want them to capture in JRPGs again the I don't feel like games nowadays incentivize you to, to replay them for the right reasons. Replayability is almost always tied to some kind of competition. And I want... I, I don't know. I mean, I guess that a lot of this boils down to personal preference because not everybody's going to want to do this stuff. But, like, I like the idea of knowing a game so well that you can be like, okay, so mm-hmm. I've played through the game. Yeah. I've beaten it. I know when things happen. I know when I'm going to get respites, when I'm going to get opportunities to do this and that and whatnot. And like he just said, I am I, I get Yuffie. I'm going to, at this point, choose to grind for these specific things to this point. That kind of stuff. Yeah. Mechanics that can allow for that. I don't like when games roadblock you by the story. Like, yeah. you, don't, you don't get access to certain things until certain points. It's like it's natural with items. Like, obviously, there are going to be items that you can't get to, like, even in Final Fantasy VII until you can get, like, a ship or a right. golden chocobo or whatever. But and that's that's also amazing. Like, the fact that there are these super-powered optional items that you can go through the game without ever getting, that's a great incentive to try and get those items. Like They need to be made reasonable again, though. Like, uh, yeah. in Final Fantasy XII, the original version, the Zodiac Spear is one of the best weapons in the game, but, like, in order to get it, you have to, like not open very specific chests throughout the game and whatnot so that RNG favors you at a particular point. Yeah, oh, that's silly. To get it because it's like randomly generated and whatnot. It's stupid. And it should never be like that. It should be like a tan. I, I, yeah. That kind of side like quests and stuff. stuff. But realistically, though, I want... Obviously, the battle system is important. I think yeah. that it needs to go back to you that traditional... Attack, magic, summon, yeah. item. Because what I would like <laughs> to see is... be super complex. Yeah. I want to see a cross between, like, the aesthetic of 15, because I do like what the oh, idea it looks beautiful. they have. Yeah, the graphics I like are the fine. idea of what they have in that world, but basically the whole a fantasy based on reality type thing. Yeah. Because I've always wanted to see Final Fantasy go to that, like, route if they weren't going to be, like, uh, sci-fi or, uh, I mean, it was, it was kind of like what Final Fantasy VII was, really. Yeah, yeah, just but not just not as I couldn't visually represent no, no, it the yeah, way yeah, that yeah, fifteen totally. does. Yeah. That's, that's what I'm saying. So, like, what I would like to see is like something like 13's battle system, but not like retarded, where you have the stagger system. Not as tough. No, see, like, 13's battle because again, it was like when I look at thirteen, the way I I describe it is tails, but you can't move. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's like still turn based though. Yeah. You're still it's, it's really not. Like, I mean, it's it, ATB. What, what I'm trying to say is that it has the one it has the base for something that could be a good turn based. See, but when I think about turn based and stuff like that, I I want it. And I mean, this is something that people might debate me on, but I want it to be tied. I want how fast I get to act and whatnot be related to stats uh-huh. and things like that. Yeah. And I. Yeah. Final Fantasy, th- I don't know how 13 worked in that regard. I mean, but I'm not saying like it has to be exactly like 13. I'm saying that the concept that they had for Are 13, you talking about as far as like visually how the battles look? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, totally. How it still implements ATB and all that shit, but it would, you would get back to being able to have control of all four characters, but yeah. the battles would still be dynamic how they are. In yeah, I'm fine with 13. that. 13. I don't care. That's similar to how, uh, Ten two was. Yeah. I don't. I don't need. I would want like ten two on crack. Two right. lines across from each other. I don't need that. Right. I just. I want mecha- the mechanics to operate the way they used to. Yeah. I'm selecting from a menu always. I'm not like. I don't care about moving the characters and yeah. stuff like that. That's not. You know. Yeah. I, I'll play. Like Tales the characters if I want can that. move if they want, 
but yeah, but I, that, I but don't want to move. It. <laughs> yeah, and um, I, I also, also want the fact custom character customization is massively important. That would to be me. sweet mm-hmm. nowadays. Yeah, and I well, yes, definitely what you're talking about. But what I mean is like materia and oh, the junctioning okay, yeah, system. Yeah. The way that you skill build in the game has to be dynamic. I don't like. I, it has to be both. I, it, if it's too broad, like everybody is just a blank template. Yeah, like it wasn't seven and eight. I that's a problem. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I also want for the ability to like be crafty. And what you, I would like, kind of like make unique ideas is like a, co- like a combination of like the because like I am a huge fan of the class based shit, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking you could have each of your characters start off as a as one class, like a tier one class, and you can modify them to grow into one of technically three classes, like one that's, like, for example, let's let's take a a mage, right? You could have him be, like, he's a generic mage. He can grow into a white mage, or maybe he can grow into a black mage. Or like red mage or blue mage or something like that? Yeah, or down the middle, where he's like a jack of all mages master of none <laughs> right like s- something an idea like that to where there's still yeah there's still just what a red mage is yeah pretty much so there's still ways to customize your characters without necessarily breaking the class system yeah well, i think to be I would, honest i would like to see a return to the class system for sure the job system um in bravely default is actually one i would like to see come to a high profile game because it, it worked really well mm-hmm. the way that it was was that like you you were the job you were but you had four ability slots that you could fill with any ability you had learned from any job mm-hmm. so like you could bring other skills with you from other jobs and like you could do some crazy combinations like um you could have uh, one class gave you a skill that allowed you to equip two shields if you wanted to yeah and you could equip go into uh, the knight class with that skill, and the knight class is the highest defense in the game, and then you could equip two of the best shields, yeah. and you could equip a skill that makes you uh, heal fi- uh, on physical damage or something. Like, just whatever. A lot for ridiculous amounts of combinations, but yeah. everybody was capable of everything. <laughs> yeah. And there was an incentive to make everybody the same, though. There's a, I just options. Options are massively important yeah. for me. I want, because, like, again, that goes to replayability. You go through the game, like, most people don't tend to grind up every class and whatnot. They usually tend to pick the direction they want to go and stick with it. It incentivizes going through a different way. Because, and I like when that different way changes how you have to play the game fundamentally. Okay. It'd be fun. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I mean, so basically, fancier visuals, but mechanically, it doesn't need to change. Yeah. Give me an overworld to explore. Yeah. Like, uh, d- towns and stuff to go through, uh, stuff that's hidden. Um, not like a plethora of side quests, but like, uh, one thing too, uh, just uh, as a side note, is mini games and stuff that are actually well thought out and yeah. Yeah, meaningful I to do. fucking hate mini games. <laughs> like, they're, they're good, they're good. Well, Final Fantasy VII has a lot of good mini games. And there, there's actually like tangible reasons to do a lot of them. Like and the, yeah. the Chocobo races yeah, and shit? Yeah, that kind of stuff. One like of the things that pissed me off about 9 was like they fucking locked the story behind a fucking mini game. Yeah. I'm like, you niggas. Are, really? How? Yeah. You had to play the fucking mini game, like the card game, to progress in the story, and it was dog shit. I think I remember that. Yeah. Because yeah. I really didn't like 9's card game. They fucked that game. I liked it. I liked no. 8's. 8's card game I thought was good. Until they started implementing Which one the was Triple rule. Triad? Nine? No. I want nine. Triple Triad, I believe, was eight. Okay. What were you had where you had like a, a three by three square? Yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah, that was eight. Okay. Alright, so all right. Ryusuke. So my next one is I want a Tokyo Mirage session sequel for the Switch. Not localized. I would also like that. Not localized by the treehouse. <laughs> Atlas home made. I, I would actually really like to see, because, like, I don't know that... I'm going to actually look this up, but what I'm talking about is I don't think that Intelligent Systems is actually owned by Nintendo. I could oh, be wrong. Because I make Fire Emblem? Yeah. Okay. They are... They aren't, but Fire, Nintendo owns Fire Emblem. Though. They're closely affiliated, but they're... Um, I actually don't think that Nintendo owns the Fire Emblem. They don't own the Fire... They own... They have to own the Fire Emblem IP. 
Well, either way, all I'm saying is I'd like to see Intelligent System and Atlas develop the game without Nintendo's interference and allow them to just do, go their own way. Yes, yeah. I would like that. Because, like, Tokyo Mirage Sessions was a great fucking game. It was a great crossover, like, even if you don't like the idle shit, it was mechanically. It was mediocre. Huh? What? <laughs> even if you don't like the idle shit, the way they crossed over, like, mechanics of, uh, like, Fire Emblem and SMT yeah. was really well done, especially like, with the session system. I see, I don't could. know enough about it because I didn't have a Wii U, and I, that, to be honest with you, I thought I'd never play it, so. With the session system, what happened was you could, it was like having a one more, but, like, on fucking crack. Okay. So, let's I mean, say, like, you know how you have, like, active and passive skills? Yes. So, you'd have passive skills that trigger certain, like, sessions. So, I would get, like, a skill that meant I could combo off of a lance move, or I could combo off of a fire move, or I could combo off of an ice move. And so, you set your team up to where, if it's, if you got your shit set right, you could have a session of, like, eight consecutive hits. And then, like, when you get into uh, skills where, like, you can... If you, like, level up that social link to that character, they can come into the session even if they're not in the active party. So let's say, like, I hit uh, someone that's weak to, like, Lance. And then that triggers a session. And then someone else will jump in. And then that triggers a session with someone that, like, like uh, combos off of that. And then, like, you just got, like, a session of, like, 15 fucking hits. Like, your whole party just gonna run train and, like... The entire enemy squad. Yeah, but it's not something that could be easily done if you have. No, to no, you have to think different. about who you're going to hit first. Yeah, and how the session's going to go. It's and not. It's not always going to be like a long combo. Maybe sometimes. Kind of similar to how baton passing would work. Yeah, maybe sometimes like somewhere in your session that might be fucked up because oh, that's not a weakness to this enemy, so it's going to like fuck up the session. So maybe I'm not going to session that. Time. I've been lost in my own thoughts for a moment of trying to rhyme sessions in a rap. <laughs> <laughs> for the podcast, but I can't. Do but that. yeah, I'd like to see smoke session, criminal possession. <laughs> I'd like to see a game with that. Busted by the police, but maybe it leaves it, a bad impression. And the niggas they caressing. <laughs> oh shit. Um, but I don't know. <laughs> How's that depression? I ain't messing. <laughs> I'd like to see them do it, but maybe I don't know. I guess they have to keep the idol theme because like. Everything, like the names of everything, is tied to kind of like performing. So, I don't know. Just with a new cast of people, not the same cast. I like the original cast. But That's like okay, Ryusuke, because this wish yeah. has my blessing. Thank you, bro. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I would be fine. To be honest with you, man, I, this isn't one of my wishes, but I, it, the Switch, as great as it is and as much as I love it so far, like. Someone somewhere needs to make a fucking JRPG for it that's not yeah. I Am Setsuna because as much as that game's okay, it's not what I want. Just yeah. trick me into paying fucking $40 for I Am Setsuna. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, is that it? It's you. Um, Wait, no. Yeah. Because yeah. you technically did yours with mine. Yes. So now we're on to our third ones. So. Are we? Yes. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you think it went by fast, but fucking we're, we've been doing this an hour. <laughs> You thought it was gonna be I mean, shorter we, we, than you. We like we like jumped off on Kevin's, and we never t- actually talked about Kevin's. I'm like, wait, no, I actually care to talk about. This. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm and I'm sure someone would have wanted that too. So you you saved this. Episode. Yeah, I'm like, nigga, you said you know turn based Final Fantasy, but we just talked about <laughs> whatever the fuck we talked about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, so, so you, as okay. as far as my third one goes, like this one, it's kind of more of a throwaway. <laughs> Get off my nuts. <laughs> oh, shit. Hey, boy, give me that good nut. God, I'm glad you think I'm that big. Because I'm certainly it's not. Like a deep throat and a fucking salami. I know, fuck. Air dick is better baby. than no dick. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. I just want. You know what? I'm going to change mine last minute. Oh, I shit. want a new Onimusha game. Okay, tell me how you really feel. See, okay. all right, hold on now, though. 
Like, do you want a new Onimusha game that's, like, exactly like the old ones, like, fixed camera angles and all that shit? Or do you want it to be, like, Onimusha, but, like, Resident Evil 4, 4 Onimusha? Well, here's the thing. Even if they made it Resident Evil 4 Onimusha, it'd still be cool as fuck because you've I'm got Elemental Swords. I'm not saying Resident swords. Evil 4 Onimusha. I don't want you to interpret that as, like, I want it, like, Onimusha, but that plays like Resident Evil 4. What I mean is find a way to take that series forward like yeah. they did with Resident Evil 4. Because, like... Resident Evil 4 was a fundamentally different game. Yeah. Well, they, they kind of did that with Dawn of Dreams. Who gives a fuck? That game sucked. <laughs> <laughs> I disagree. I didn't I like didn't it. I didn't even play it. I, <laughs> I didn't like it nearly as much as 3 and 1. It had a cool protagonist looking dude. What yeah. was his name? Like Suki or Saki or something? It was. Oh, fuck. I think, I think it was something like that. I'm looking at Trevin because he's the other weeby guy here. Maybe he knows. He's not weeby. <laughs> he's our artist. He draws our waifus. Trevin's here. He, he has Just letting you guys know. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, Trevin Dick is better than Kevin Dick. Yes. Oh, it might be, honestly. Damn. He could get it deeper, at least. We're taking political stances now. Yeah, because I got like, <laughs> cause, like I've still got like Dick two inches hide, like, <laughs> hidden behind a layer of fat and shit. But anyway. Um, honestly, I wouldn't mind too much because, again, like, the farther away you get from base Resident Evil, the more it just becomes a, a gun game. Yeah. But the farther away you get from Onimusha, it's a, it's still a sword game. <laughs> so it's like, you know, as long as it's good and it's got that Onimusha brand, maybe some, you know, fucking elements, like elemental weapons. Like, I love those things. It yeah. was like a lightning katana. Whoa. What? Everything just changed, and I'm so salty. <laughs> what? 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 <laughs> I wish that I would have thought about this sooner. What? Just never mind. I can't talk I'll about it. I'll say it. I don't give a fuck. Well, I mean, you've still got a wish left. Yeah, but it's not what I want to use that wish on. <laughs> <laughs> Brave Fencer Musashi sequel. Yes. That doesn't suck. Uh, yes. Oh, shit. God, man, that game. I, I You said <laughs> Elemental Swords. Yeah. Uh, the just, scrolls, dog. Uh, that game is so underrated. It's that out game of is amazing. That's fun. That was that, fun. that was worth bringing up. Well, in the whatever yeah. Samurai Legend Musashi, that yeah. bullshit sequel, yeah. we got that game to suck my dick. Yeah. Wait, which one was that one? Was that it? Was trash? Yeah, it was garbage. Was yeah. it like a shit? Or it was bullshit. Was it bullshit? People like love that game. Not really. From what I understand. If they love that game, we'd have another one. Yeah, they're wrong. <laughs> Dog, that came out at the time when Square Enix was making fucking, what was it, I um, Dawn of Mana on the PS2, and Children of Mana, and Heroes of Mana. I don't remember Dawn of Mana. It was in a dark time for Square Enix. Yeah. I mean, honestly, like, we could... we could Alchemist 1 and 2. <laughs> we, could, we could lump that Brave Fencer Musashi Ryan. thing oh, into uh, into the Final Fantasy Actually, wish. Actually, it was made by Square. Yeah. So they could return to form with that motherfucker, too. Yeah, just give me another Brave Fencer Musashi flick. That'd be great. But Anyways, continue on. I'm sorry. Fucking Anamusha Man... I just I just loved playing through those games. They were just fun. I just remember hitting the camera and I never touched it again. There was no camera. Yeah, yeah. because it was fixed camera angles. <laughs> and I, mean, I, I, I like fixed camera shit. angles. It's the highest caliber. I actually like fixed camera angles. I don't. Well, that's okay. <laughs> because I respect your opinion. I respect yours too. I'm just saying. <laughs> respect Oliver's face. All right, so uh, who's next? It's in, in nor- <coughs> it was <coughs> normally going like this. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's your turn Hello. again. All right. So I guess um Hold on, he's gotta open his phone because he can't remember what he wrote down. I just thought the whole crowd goes, goes so loud. <laughs> oh <laughs> It took me like two seconds. Okay. <laughs> so my last wish, and I guess this just kinda ties into like what we've been talking about for like the past forever, is I want Final Fantasy versus thirteen. I want that fucking game. What it was supposed to be? Yes. What was it supposed to I be? I want the original vision for 15 as its own fucking game. Like Tetsunoya Nomura's vision yeah, for it? before they let that fucker Tabata take over and, like, ass rate the and entire Final game. Fantasy Class Zero it, or Type Zero it? Yeah. Like, when you go back and look at, like, all of, like the storyboards and, like, all the source shit for Versus 13, man, that shit was interesting, dude. Like, it was going to be, like, the first Final Fantasy to have, like, blood and gore and shit in it. Ooh. It was, like, it fucking was a dark game. Like, and, like, a lot of the things that were, like, in there are still in 15. Like, 
the reason why, like, they wear, like, those fucking drabby-ass fucking clothes, even though they're, like, in the middle of, like, the desert and shit, is because, like, they signed a deal with, like, this clothing brand, and they couldn't <laughs> renege on it. But, yeah, but it was because, like, insomnia was supposed to be a place that, like, worshipped death. And so that's why, like, all the clothes and shit were like that. It was supposed to be dark and everything. Because they that place, like, worshipped death. And it was supposed to be, like, a... F- like a version of Tokyo. Okay. And you know how you had like Altisha was basically like Venice and shit like that. What I remember hearing a long time ago was that it was like the city that Noctis was from and whatnot was going to be the only place in the world that had technology Mm -hmm. because of the crystal and everything else was going to be like primitive and like more like the fantasy Final Fantasy stuff. Uh, to some extent because like you had Prompto who was from another who was supposed to be from another land and that was that's why uh, he was the only one that like in Insomnia no one had guns everyone used bladed weapons so the reason why Prompto was the only one that had firearms is because where he was from they used firearms Okay. And shit like that. And, like, they were supposed to actually kind of be, like, had, like, a, a cousin-esque relationship, Prompto and Noctis. And uh, I think everyone else was just about the same. It's interesting to note because you had talked to me about this before, but um, I actually, like, I I didn't play enough of Final Fantasy fifteen to care mm-hmm. whether or not Final Fantasy Versus thirteen would have been a better game. But listening to you talk about how episode Duske was better than the Final Fantasy XV we ultimately got Mm -hmm. leads me to believe that most of what would have made that game special was lost along the way and compromised by trying to make it beautiful. People, like... The animations, the licensing, everything that they end up... Like, the animations in that game are great, but they sacrificed a lot to have them in there, like, uh, as far as um, other things, like... It's not as open as it could be. It's just clunky. Yeah, they stripped the combat from Episode Duske because they took out all special moves. Like, there's no special moves you can really pull off in Final Fantasy XV outside, like, the team-based shit. But, like, that's (laughs) just, like, triggering a cutscene or whatever. But, like, in Episode Duske, like, each weapon had, like, its own special move. Like, you know, you had the lance, you had jump. You had other moves with different weapons and stuff like that. And you still had, like, team-based shit, I think. So they stripped that. You know, it became basically, you know, hold circle to fucking combo, circle in a directional button, even though none of that shit really mattered. And, like, I don't know, just the the vision they had for Versus 13 was just so much more of an interesting and what seemed to be more of a realized story than what we ultimately got got with 15. Yeah, I agree. Because 15 is basically just, like, a Korean fucking MMO now. Like, they don't care about any of, like, the lore or backstory or world building that was supposed to take place. Because, I mean, all of the, none of that's done in the game. Yeah, I so agree. So if I could get Nomura's version of Versus 13, just so I can know what it's like, just so I can get what I was promised, mm-hmm. you know, all those years ago, yeah. I would be happy kind of Kind of like uh, how sometimes I wish I would have gotten the original vision of Resident Evil 2. I... I've never paid that much attention to it because I, I, having watched uh, other Kevin play yeah. uh, Resident Evil Two so many times, I kind yeah. of love that game. Oh yeah, yeah, the game is amazing. Like, don't get me wrong, but Resident Evil One Point Five, as it's called, was already like damn near finished, and then they completely scrapped it for whatever reason to remake it into what we got today. And it, and it very much could have been worse. It could have been, but I still think it would have been cool to be able to play that as well yeah all right well my last one i feel like it should have been seen coming i love this game (laughs) but i want 50 cent blood on the sand three oh shit you already know (laughs) my boy 50 cent and the whole g unit crew back together (laughs) again to cause fucking bananas ass mayhem (laughs) up in this bitch and i want bananas I yes. want fucking whoop your head from the Get Rich or Die. We're gonna have the reunion to of the 50 whole cent time. I want to play the whole time. Fifty Cent and the game and, and well, everybody else that though. was in G Unit. That's what I'm saying. It'll be a special event. They really re- the game just wouldn't be like the villain. You want <laughs> the game as the villain? I would rather be Fifty Cent be the villain and game be the hero. To be honest, games are better. Record. Oh shit. <laughs> Like inception as, as long as long as Tupac gets to be like the dead mentor. 
Yeah, the, the, the fucking Force Ghost. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, my G. <laughs> Anyways, you want to be a rider, you got to wow, follow these Wow, we let this tip. roll for a minute. What I really would like <laughs> is a sequel to The World Ends With You on the Nintendo <laughs> Switch. And yeah. I Listen, man, the these motherfuckers... <laughs> huh? Blood of Sand 3, though. Yeah. <laughs> Here's your boy up. Well, Waifu K is sponsored. <laughs> I will promote we'll the shit We'll publish that it. game. We'll publish it. <laughs> <laughs> waifu games. <laughs> waifu games. A waifu cast Anyways, production. the world ends with you. I've said, talked about a lot about it, but um, one of the, the reasons why I think that that game deserves a sequel is that it spent a lot of its time and effort in it. Pretty much all of its post-game effort yeah. was spent on world building and making it seem like everything was much more big than what you were shown, ultimately. And... They definitely left it open for a sequel with all of that. And they saw fit to re-release the game on the iPhone and on Android and all that with HD sprite work and uh, vector artwork and whatnot. And it sold relatively well. And at very least, I think the Switch should get a handheld only like because it's a touchscreen game mm. version of that. But I, can, I, think, I don't think it would cost a lot of money for Square to make it. I think that... Especially when you look at the numbers for that game, the fact that they they still print it, a game like mm-hmm. that is still printed, is evidence enough. It was to on me. sale for it's, like fucking like ten twenty dollars. It's popular enough website. that it was reprinted. Enough, it it was initially printed, then reprinted, then a third printing is ongoing, because yeah. it was so popular. At that point, just I know that there are enough people like me who are clamoring for the game. The game had. Um, it doesn't even need the same cast of characters. You could just expand upon the lore. Um, I feel like it had a lot of... the All the restrictions of the game were really on it being on the DS and Square's first DS game. Oh, wow, yeah. So, like, I feel like now, especially with the Switch being much easier to make games for, it'd be much easier to make a much bigger and better version of it. Now, would you like to see it be in the same style and vein as the first game, or would you like to see them, like, bring it to fucking I don't the expect them generation? to be... I don't expect them to be vanillaware with this. No, I do not want it to try to be, like, fucking realism 3D, like Kingdom well, Hearts. No, no, I don't want it to be like Kingdom Hearts. You don't want that either? No. Okay. What I, I want it to be exactly like what it was, sprite work and like that, but... Okay high quality sprite work yeah. like, no, like I said I don't want them to be vanillaware I don't expect that from them pretty, pretty but you know like that I guess kind it wouldn't work for something work. like that though. I, and I just give me a much bigger world to explore realistically like the gameplay of that game was very sound yeah. they don't need to even change it just make it bigger like you they were team up with Arc System Works. Yeah. Dog. That's <laughs> exactly <laughs> where I'm at. I'm saying <laughs> what, they team up with Arc what System Works. Oh didn't shit! Make yeah, that'd be nice. Like it, um, I was thinking about doing this instead of what we ultimate when I said uh, the Wolf Team, uh, Star Ocean Team getting back together. It was going to be b- between that or a Metroidvania made by Arxis. Because Arxis has not really made anything other than they made a uh, hardcore uprising, which yeah. is a sequel to Contra Hardcore. Just see, that's my favorite Contra. And then game. they made uh, they made Guilty Gear Two, which was uh, fucking like an, an RTS game. type game. Yeah. yeah. But I didn't even play our hardcore uprising, but I've seen enough gameplay to know that it was fucking awesome. Yeah. And just to see them make a Metroidvania would have been incredible. But, yeah, like, Arxis level of understanding uh, sprite work and whatnot. Yeah, well, I mean, even if they, they can make it look like Exert. Because, like, the bad battle system is the only time where, like, really detailed sprites are important to me. Because a lot of the stories can be told through, like, character portraits and stuff, and I'm fine with that. But, just detailed sprite work, detailed... Because uh, one of the, the appealing parts about the original was that it was, like, depicting real Tokyo. Or real Shibuya. Yeah. Have that be more accurate, kind of like. Do you want to leave Shibuya? Yeah, I would like it to be Shibuya? bigger. Yeah. Um, what like, about uh, New York. as far as music? Do you want a Sawa to come back? I, I would like them to do whatever it took to kind of maintain the exact same feel they had. Like, I mean, Persona. I, I guess bring them back because Persona's music for three to five has been consistently good because one person handled it. Yeah. So, like, I think that because. 
The World Ends With You is one of the better soundtracks. It's one of my favorites of all time. So, like, I just... I could talk endlessly about why that game is mechanically something that we know. everybody <laughs> Also, I think that a sequel could take everything that was great about it and expand it, and if it was on the Switch, it could get the exposure that it deserves, even though the original's not underrated. Yeah. Now that I think about it, me and Chafe were making fun of you like a few weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, The World Ends With You's 10th Anniversary. Oh, and he didn't post it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know that. <laughs> he was like, you mean to tell me he sucked this game's dick <laughs> so hard. Dog he didn't even <laughs> celebrate the 10th anniversary? Well, I mean, <laughs> that kind of shit, I don't know. I'm not sentimental. <laughs> I'm the sentiment. I think I even word. posted something about it. I'm not. I am. Sentiment. I still say happy birthday to certain waifu. I'm not a. Sen- <laughs> I'm not a sentimental person. I love the game, and I. To be honest with you, it's like that. That chapter of I don't know. Like, I played the world ends with you. I've gotten. I know that it's like, I understand that game intimately, and it's like a part of my life that's just. It's a piece of me now, and now I want a sequel more than, I because I. I it might seem like I think about The World Ends With You a lot, <laughs> but in the day-to-day, I don't. I haven't played it in years. I, I you know, I like, I like own it still, don't get me wrong, but I don't, I don't think about it that often. I just really loved it, and what, I know that they, if the same team got together, they could make a much better game for a mm-hmm. sequel. I'm just glad I didn't buy the physical version of the soundtrack because I didn't get to meet Sawa that And year. I'm saying, these motherfuckers need to ma- stop making... First of all, stop making a million... St- Kingdom Hearts spinoffs. That's number one. Two, <laughs> don't include motherfucking the world ends with you characters in a Kingdom Hearts mainline game for no fucking reason. Why are you teasing me? That's Why true. you do it? That's true. That was pretty fucked up. That's raw. <laughs> and I'm not pleased Maybe about I like it. Raw. <laughs> but uh, with that being said, I think we're gonna we're... go away for a while. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Weekly life for my nigga. Oh. Oh, shit. God damn it. And plugs. We gotta let niggas know where to find us, too. Yeah, Who was yeah. my weekly life for last week? Um, Mine was Kayla. Yeah, he was... He, he Mine Daenerys Targaryen. Uh, maybe, I don't know. Man. Something like that. Something like that. If you remember it that way, then, yeah. I don't know if it was that or not. I'm probably it was. Probably was. I can't do her. Sadly, we can't do her. We can't do any of them. We can't. I've tried. <laughs> All right, well, um, I think that my waifu of the week is going to go to Mitsuha from Your Name. Uh, good choice. I thought about that one. Good choice. Good choice. Uh, I'm not going to go into detail because if you haven't seen the movie, go watch it and then ask yourself if you need me to go into detail. All I'm detail. saying is if I woke up as Mitsuha, I would totally fondle those titties. Yeah. I mean, I wake up and get to fondle my titties. I mean, you know, you're scared? You. I got some. Um, I got some big old bitties. My waifu of the week is gonna go to uh, RNA Highland from Final Fantasy 15. Okay. Is she's it, that shit? Is, is she the one that works on cars? Is no, that that's her? that's Cindy. No, fuck her. She's got a nice ass. She's got a Cindy, nice. It's okay. I would put I'll a baby. You want to know who has the best ass in Final Fantasy 15 though? Low key. Noctis, you. F- no. We can't say that. Yes, yeah, we, we can. can. <laughs> but, um... <laughs> <laughs> fucking, uh... You cuck. Gentiana. Get the f- cucked. The spirit bitch. <laughs> but she's actually really Shiva. But Word. Like, yeah, so, like... It's like how Loki Symmetra has the fattest ass. I think you told yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know. I, I study this shit. Scientific. <laughs> <laughs> so I I've... I, I've Done the measurements. I've collected. So the what data. you gotta do is you go to Niflheim and there's a statue of fucking Shiva, right? Mm-hmm. But it's not really a statue. <gasps> nigga. It's really Shiva. That's her real. It's her body when she got killed. Now the ass was already fat on the statue, but you know you gotta take it into context because the statue is huge. It's condensed. <laughs> yeah. So after like you get to fucking the last boss and you're like, oh shit, Gentiana was actually fucking Shiva, and then like them clothes come off <laughs> and that ass is just out. I'm like, nigga, I didn't know. <laughs> I'm like, whoa, Jesus. And it's five of them. I'm like, it's just like, oh, it's just ass. And, oh, it's another ass. Oh, it's another ass. And it's just like, fuck the rest of the bitches in this game. I would. Except Arnea. Arnea is still tight. Which one's that? 
But Luna I'll has a nice ass too, though. Luna has a nice no, no, ass. I one? am also a, a butt lover. Because because my my I can't remember her name. But Female I, butts. I had Which a fit. One? Which I had, one? She was the, basically Yuffie. Oh, you talking about ears? Yes. I'm the only one Loki on this podcast who has sex on the regular. I mean, I mean it you gotta put niggas it out. It like counts that. if you pay for I it. I almost Derek. made myself sound gay. <laughs> so I had to qualify oh, that I'm not. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. I no like... disrespect to you guys, because you're all sexy, and if I was a female, I would offer my puss up to you. Mm-hmm. Okay, thanks, man. I appreciate that for what it's worth. <laughs> <laughs> You'd probably be a pretty attractive female, too, honestly, if we're really if we're really looking at it. You know what I mean? He's a thin dude. Kind of got long legs. <laughs> <laughs> I got a donk. <laughs> you can, you can, if you were a girl... Can we have not, it going on? All right, so this is on record now that the, <laughs> these motherfuckers have imagined what I would be like as a woman. Whoa! You said these. Nick, I'm going to need you to slow all the way the fuck down. <laughs> that was Luna. <laughs> I ain't say shit about you this You didn't nigga. even leave the driveway, <laughs> homie. <laughs> I need you to put that shit in reverse, dog. Uh. How, do, how do I even or, follow that? I don't think my blitz have ever been that big on this motherfucker. <laughs> shit. Oh, shit. Anyway, my wife of the week is oh. my original waifu, my very first waifu ever, and that's Yuffie from Final Fantasy VII. With that said, we're going to go away for a while because I can't follow what we just did. It was great, though. I enjoyed that. It was. For what it was. But while we're gone, don't forget your waifu. Never forget your waifu. Put on the brakes.